Hey everybody, it's the Twilight Zone again. It's your favorite show. Is it? This one? And it could be. This is the cold equations. So I hope you brought your mittens and a nice hot cup of cocoa. Because we're going to be in the lab and we're going to discover the secret to the universe and the inevitability of our own existence coming to an end. You know, it's just the cold hard facts of the equations. Last time we had a, an appointment on Route 17. And it was a story of a man whose life got taken over after a heart transplant and the zombie heart wanted to chase after its ex-girlfriend. So he stalked her for a while and eventually they went on a date. The end. It was sweet. It was they, they filmed it in a sweet way somehow, that story. So I'm okay with it. <laughs> Let's see if this one is sweet. It doesn't sound it. It sounds cold. We're in space! On the frontier, there can be little margin for error. Thomas Barton has been piloting emergency dispatch ships for five years. He has never been faced with this particular law of the frontier until now. What law? Thomas Barton what? is about to discover firsthand that there are limits in the boundless reaches of the Twilight Zone. Unauthorized payload. Uh oh. Unauthorized we got a stowaway. No. I feel like we've. I feel like this story has been told and retold, and like this story feels familiar. You got a stowaway on a ship, and you, you don't have enough fuel to get to the to wherever you're going, and you need to make a decision: do you eject the stowaway, or do you eject the cargo, or do you eject yourself, or do you just drift in space until you die? It's just the cold equations of the the thing. You see. I just ditched the cargo, but it's medical supplies needed to solve a plague. God damn it. How about we just turn off our engines and just drift? We're already going at a particular speed, let's just keep going at that speed, you know? That's one of the laws of the universe. What do you mean it doesn't apply to this futuristic tech? Well, do we really need this cargo? What about this seat that you're sitting in? Can we eject that? That's like the weight of a person. You don't need the seat. You could just you have a standing desk. Problem solved. You know, or anything. Anything we can unbolt and toss out the airlock. That, that, that'll do it. It'll be female. It'll be a woman. For sure. That's what'll make it so hard. Or we could just shoot them in space and episode solved. Shouldn't we have detected this like earlier though, into the flight? Like at takeoff? Alright, come out of there. Yep. Right, hold it right there. Right there. Shooter! Alright, come out real slow. Look, I know I shouldn't have done this. Who are you? I was going to Mimir uh, for the linguistics academy there. You see, my brother. She's super Jerry, young. He works on Woden, on the government survey team there. And it's been five years since I've seen him. I haven't seen him since he left Earth. You see, it was just sort of the two of us growing up. And well, yeah. I knew it would be like a year before I'd see him again. And I know I shouldn't have stowed away, but I just, I, I didn't want to wait another year. I'm not a freeloader. I can pay for my own keep once we get to work. And I've got a Class B computer license, and my background is in linguistics, so that might be useful. Did you get out and push? What's your name? Marilyn. My brother's Jerry Cross. Do you know him? No, I don't. Why would you know him? Are we going faster? Yeah, I shut off the uh, engines that were decelerating us as we moved into Woden's star system. I'm trying to save a little fuel for a little while. Why? Oh, oh. That's what we need the fuel for, to decelerate. We've already gotten to the place. We just need the fuel to decelerate. And we do, we do, we can't just... 
He, he, he already did what I was saying. You know, just shut it off. We don't need that word going in us. That's the problem. We can't slow ourselves down. What if we use the planet, its atmosphere, as a braking mechanism? How about that? Then we won't need as much fuel. You know? We can't even get rid of your chair now. That'll just exacerbate the problem. No, getting rid of this chair would work. No, the, the lighter we are, the easier, the less fuel we'll need to slow down. So we can still do the chair thing. Stardust, this is EDS 34G11. Priority Blue, I need to speak with Commander Delhart immediately. Are you gonna. It's more serious than that. Barton, what seems to be the problem? Commander Delhart, we have a stowaway on board. I assume you follow standard procedures. Negative, nope. sir, I have not. The situation is a little unusual here. The stowaway isn't a criminal or a smuggler. She's a girl. Yeah. What? She wants to see her brother in Woden. She didn't even know what she was doing. Oh. Commander Delhart, is there another cruiser in the area? A freighter or, or another scout ship? Anything? Oh, you too far out. We're the only ship within 40 light years. What about sending out another EDS? It would never reach you on time. Get There's just nobody out there to help. Martin, I'm sorry. I, I wish to God there was something I could do, but there isn't. You do understand that, don't you? What does he mean? Well, he's got to shoot you. He could sacrifice himself. Are you going to tell me what he means? The ship is carrying serum for cholera fever. <laughs> group one on Woden. Of course it is. Which means 35 men are going to die unless the ship with a serum reaches them on schedule. That's not that many. I'm throwing you off the yes. schedule? EDS, this is ship's records. Hey. EDS. This is EDS, I acknowledge. We'll need all the data on the subject's identification disk. One moment, please. I see identification disk. No, she's carrying her discs like a dog tag. Name Marilyn Lee Cross, date of birth July 7th, 2040. Place of 2040. Birth, Abbots, Michigan, American Commonwealth Earth. American Commonwealth. Time of execution. What? Uh, what does she mean? You shouldn't have heard that part. At what time was the stowaway ejected from the ship? I'll inform you later. Ejected? She can't be serious. We don't have enough fuel. I thought maybe, oh, maybe once I contacted Delhart, Delhart could do something about it. I don't know. Warning: fuel supply insufficient for mission completion. See? Moving to condition yellow. Oh, cool timer. I didn't hurt anybody. Maybe we could turn that clock off. Use that power. I just wanted to see my brother. Nobody wants you to die. Nobody would ever let it be this way. If there was anything humanly possible they could do to change it, but there's not. These emergency dispatch ships are given just exactly enough fuel to get to their destination. Why? A little extra to allow for atmospheric turbulence. Added weight will cause it to lose its fuel before we reach the ground. Yeah, it'll crash and you and I'll die and so will 35 people waiting for the serum. What about the Stardust? Can it come to pick me up? No. Nope. You talk like this happens every day, you know? It's just like you're throwing some excess baggage overboard. You don't think I'm gonna have to live with this for the rest of my life? I mean, every night when you come to me in my dreams, don't you think if there was something, anything I could do to help you, I would do it? There's one thing. There's one thing. Does she know how to fly this thing? We just gotta get rid of the, all, all this furniture. It's all just numbers, isn't it? Ratios. Equations. Cold equations, girl. It's nothing personal. It's just, uh, it's just mathematics. That's right. Yeah, you're right. It is just mathematics. I mean, H amount of fuel won't power this ship safely to its destination with M plus X amount of mass. It's as simple as that. You're the X. X. It's me, isn't it? That's right. I can go alone, or I can take 35 others with me. In case you're wondering, the EDS doesn't have any sophisticated landing computers. I mean, I mean, you can't pilot the ship by yourself. No. I know. Thanks for the thought, though. Isn't there anything else? Hey, hey, I like that he addressed the fact that he could be the one to eject, you know? That he wasn't just... He's like, yeah, if I if I go out, you won't be able to land this thing. You'll crash, and those 35 people will die too. You want jettison? These things are designed pretty lean. I mean, there's hardly an extra kilogram. The chair! Can we unbolt it? Wait a second. Wait one second. Warning. Mission completion. 
Yeah, how about that medical kit? That's gotta weigh a lot. Well, the panels, the panels too. The flooring. And she doesn't weigh that much, look at her. Your hat. All this extra clothing you're wearing. We cut her hair off. You think it's enough? Well, we'll soon find out. Well, twenty-four kilograms. God damn it! That's a lot. Damn it! That's not even half what we need. How long do I have before I have to leave? I have to reactivate the engines and start deceleration by nineteen hundred hours. That's less than an hour. Oh God! How did this happen so fast? Entering Woden gravitational vector. Phase two engine ignition must occur at T minus seventy-five. Yeah, okay, yeah. You want to talk to him? Your brother, do you want to talk to your brother? I think we're within range now. Yes. EDS 34G11 to group two on Woden, please copy. We copy EDS. Jerry Cross, please, it's urgent. He's busy. Jerry, no, he went out on a reconnaissance mission. Please notify him as soon as possible, then signal us, it's urgent. He said tell her to call back tomorrow. Oh, nine minutes. Eight minutes. It's Fifteen seconds. It's cold in here. Is it cold? Yeah, it's that chair you're sitting in. It's 25 kilograms of pure cold steel. Yeah, it's colder than it should be. Yeah. I've been so stupid. So selfish. It wasn't your fault. It really wasn't your fault at all, and they'll understand that. I'll never be able to tell them. I never took them for granted. <laughs> never being able to tell them how much I love them. They know. Yeah, they know. I've read about how people look when they die in space. Jeez. I didn't do anything to die for. Please, I know you didn't. I am so sorry. Signal transmission from oh, Jerry. Here he is. It's Jerry. Cross here. What is it? Jerry. I wanted to see you. <laughs> Marilyn. What are you doing on an EDS? I wanted to see you, Jerry, so I hid on the ship. Yep. You hid. The stowaway. I didn't know what it would mean. He knows. He knows. Marilyn, what have you done? I didn't mean to hurt you, Jerry. I just wanted to see. Sorry, don't don't cry, sis. EDS, have you called Stardust? Is there anything? There's nothing he can do, Jerry. He tried everything. He did try. I just wanted to say goodbye, Jerry. We're losing contact with the base now. Jerry. Tell me I love him. I have to say goodbye now. <laughs> but maybe we'll see each other again. Uh, not too soon, hopefully. I mean, nothing you can see. I'll be there. Always think of me like that. Never any other way. <sighs> Goodbye, Jerry. I love you. I love you. Are we gonna have a happy ending somehow? Is there anything we can do? I'm not ready. I don't want to. I don't want to see this. It's happening so slowly. I feel like something has to stop it. It's just the cold equations. Oh.
He had to do it. No other choice. In the darkness, Thomas Barton mm -hmm. hurtles towards his destination with the realization that there is room for emotion on the wilder frontiers of the universe. Oh, emotion and the memory of a girl who had not known that sometimes it takes a human life to balance a cold equation in the black geometry of the Twilight Zone. Jesus. Reich. I thought maybe we could save her. No way of unbolting that chair. Probably really lightweight because it's from the future. Barely weighs anything. Hey. That was a couple of things. One, I want to say that's a good episode of The Twilight Zone. Two, I wasn't emotionally invested. I was kind of goofing about. I think the problem for me is that I feel like it's, it's a story I've seen like three or four times already. Right? With various ending, I feel like sometimes we don't we don't have to kill them. Sometimes we can just figure out something to stop it. You know? But uh, it's a very... What I like about this episode, it reminds me of Examination Day. Is that what it's called? Um, it's just... It's in the future. It's matter of fact. It's cold. It's brutal. It's uncompromising. And... They commit to the ending. You know? They don't wuss out. He doesn't sacri... Importantly, he doesn't sacrifice himself in a wholesome sort of... Just press that button. It'll land itself. I've had a good life, you know? Some sort of cheesy bullshit like that. They don't they don't wuss out on it and do that. Just because she's vulnerable and young and she got her whole life together and she didn't do anything wrong. You know? They don't. They just say, well you know, I get it. It's really, really sad. It's really heartbreaking. Get spaced, you know? The end. So I, I appreciate this episode. I didn't enjoy watching it. It's not a story I like to watch. But I do appreciate that uh, it exists. And we did try to get rid of as much weight as we could. He was unscrewing panels. How about keep going? How much? How many? How many panels does the ship really need? I know he said they they kind of make them as efficiently light as possible, as you would imagine, to save on fuel, but I don't know. I'm sure there was a few things in the cockpit he didn't need either. You know? Probably didn't need the communications device or the TV or anything once that was done. Or the dog tag reader, you know? You just need the, the ability to land. Anything that isn't navigation, you can airlock and the lighter you get the closer you get to the 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 cutoff point the more survivable the the landing will be you know i know you got this the, the only thing i don't like about the it's 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 important to have it in the story but it's sort of annoying to have those 35 people you know, if we don't do this, if you stay on board, we could eh, 35 other people could die, you know? If it was just the two of them, I think the two of them and some a bunch of cargo nobody cares about. Couldn't, couldn't we have jettisoned like half the cargo, you know, 17 people, you know? We could get split it out between them. But uh, yeah, if it was just the two of them, they probably would risk a landing burning up on landing or smashing into the ground or something. You know? What I did like, there's a lot of emotion, emotion in the episode from her, but I think the most powerful bit of emotion isn't her lamenting not being able to tell her family she loves them. Nothing like that. No, 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 no. Sentimental, soppy hogwash. What really got me uh, was the the pilot after he he ejected her? The silent shot of him um, breaking down. No words, just just the after effects of what he what he'll have to live with. That that's good. That's great. 
you know? No sub story about brothers or family members or I'm so young, I'm so innocent. Just, uh, that's that's an, an emo, a proper emotional moment that I like. So, yeah, that was the cold equations. Next week we've got okay, quite quite different, wasn't it, from appointment on Route Seventeen? The stalkery sweet love story about a man who loves pictures of branches. I want to see the episode with the branches. Next episode, we've got Stranger in Possum Meadow. Is it an, another possum? We gotta we gotta eject the other possum out of the meadow. It's gonna be a retelling of this story in a possum meadow. So come back for that. Sounds exciting. It sounds surreal. But we'll see what it's all about next time. Have a great day. Don't stow up aboard anything. You never know what kind of weird rules they have. Oh, one thing before I leave, one thing I did like as well is that everybody was on the same page about what it meant for her stowing up aboard. You know, everybody contacted and even the brother knew. The only one who didn't know was her. You think she might have looked that up, you know? Consequences of stowing away on a ship. Oh, I'll have to be. They'll have to eject me because they won't have enough fuel. Maybe I'll. Maybe I'll do it a different way. Maybe I'll save up for another five years. She just didn't do her research. I guess she didn't want to be tracked. Later. You know, by the feds. Right. I'll see you next week. <laughs>